All right, so let's go ahead and move into Eclipse and let's start writing some code. So the first thing I want to do is um, actually add a new class that will test this out. So I'll do a right click. I'll say new class and two entries here. First off for a package name, I want to give the package name of com.lovetocode.hibernate.demo. That's the actual package name I want to use here. And then I'll move down to the name. This is the actual name of the class I'm going to create. And the name is called Create Student Demo. And I'll also check the box here at the bottom for a public static void main, just so I can have a main method. And once you're happy with that, go ahead and click on the Finish button. Okay, great. So we have this. Um, Class we just created, create student demo. It's in this package, com loves to code dot hibernate dot demo. All right, so we're in good shape here. So let's move down to this main method. We'll clear out the little uh, auto generated method stub. And as you know, I love to write little comments in the code before I actually start writing all the real code here. So here, the first thing I'll do is I'll say create session factory. And then the second item is create a session. All right. So here I'll say session factory factory equals new configuration. Dot config and I'll give the actual hibernate config file name. That's hibernate dot CFG dot XML. That's the file that we had earlier in the previous videos. I'll say dot add annotated class and I'll give the actual student dot class that we also created. And then I'll say dot build session factory. Open paren, close paren with a semi. All right, that looks good. And again, I'll go through and I'll fix the imports here. So I'll just do a right click. I'll say source. Organize imports. And it'll ask about configuration. I'll choose org.hibernate.cfg.configuration and I'll hit finish. And so let me move up to the top just to make sure the imports are right. So on line three, we should have session factory from Hibernate and also configuration from Hibernate. And then on line six, we have our student that we placed in the entity package in the previous video. So this looks really good. So we're on track so far. Good job. All right, let me stretch out here at the bottom, get some white space so I can stretch and move around. All right. So now I need to create a session. And again, it's really simple, right? So I simply uh, go to the factory and I'll say dot uh, get current session. And this will give me the actual current session uh, that I can make use of. And again, I need to fix some of the imports here. I'll just hit the red X to the left and I'll say import org.hibernate.session. Okay, good. So we took care of all of our imports. We got the basic things in place here. Let me set up a little try finally block for my code. So I'll do a try. And inside of this um, try block, I'll say use the session object to, I don't know, blah, 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 save the object or whatever or save the world. I don't know. <laughs> We're going to save the world. And then finally here, finally, I'll say factory dot close just to close up the factory. All right. So back to saving the world here or saving the Java objects. I'm sorry. I'm having too much fun. Uh, so let's kind of just jot down some comments here as far as what we want to do when we save the world or when we save the Java objects. So the first thing I need to do is uh, create the student object. And then I'll go through and actually start or begin a transaction. And then I'll actually save the student object. I'll save the world. And then finally, we'll commit the transaction. And so that's our basic game plan here for, uh, you know, doing the work inside of this uh, method. So the comment on line 23 is more of a high level comment. So I'll kind of remove that. And now I'll just kind of take these four discrete items here and or discrete steps. And I'll just do some print lines also just to kind of give me some diagnostics when I'm performing these different operations here. 
So first off, I'll do a print line. I'll say uh, creating a new student object. And then um, I'll do just that. I'll say student temp student equals new student. And then Paul Wall and email address is paul at love to code dot com. And again, this is just a plain old Java object, right? It just has the special annotations that we set up a little earlier. Now, at this point, I'm going to start the transaction. So I use this session object and I say begin transaction. And now I do the real work here. I say session dot save. And I'm going to save an object and I'll save that temp student. And I'll print, I'll do a print line here also just to tell me, you know, kind of what's going on. So I'll say saving the student, or I don't know, saving the world. <laughs> and then finally, I'll do a commit. I'll perform a commit. So I'll say uh, session dot say, I mean, session dot commit. Actually, session dot get transaction dot commit. Sorry about that. I stand corrected. And then I'll do a print line to say done, just to let me know that I'm done and everything worked out so, uh, just fine. So that's the basic coding here for saving an object. So we go through, we create the student, we start the transaction, save the student object, commit the transaction, and then we simply print out our little uh, done statement at the end. And that's it. So I can go ahead and save this file and then I can run it. Uh, so I'm going to run this create student demo.java. Just do a right click. I choose run as and then run it as a Java application. All right, great. So here's the output. So it says creating new student, saving student, and then it has hibernate insert into student. That portion was actually printed out by hibernate as far as showing the actual SQL. And then it finally says done at the end. All right. So that's how that worked out, but let's go test this out. Um, I don't trust it. <laughs> so let's move back over to this uh, MySQL workbench. I actually want to look at this data in the table. So I'll log into our database. Our password is HB student, the same as our username. Um, I'll go over to this uh, schema HB student tracker. I'll expand the tables here for this student table, right click and do a select rows and booyah. This looks really good. So we have uh, Paul wall in our database. So first name of Paul, last name wall, and his email address is Paul at love to code.com. Now this is great. Now you may notice that the ID is set to a value of six. Uh, that's because this table has a um, primary key column set to auto increment. Um, I ran this a couple of times earlier, so that's why my ID is six. Uh, your value may be different. Um, I'll talk more about primary keys uh, in a following video and the auto increment. But for now, you know, we have um, some assurance that, hey, our data was actually inserted into the database and it is there alive and well. So good job so far. This is your first kind of real complete Hibernate program. In the following videos, we'll dig a little bit deeper. Um, I'll show you some other scenarios as far as um, retrieving data, querying data, performing updates, and also performing deletes. So we'll cover all of the CRUD features uh, for using Hibernate with our student class. So a lot of good things in store. Stay tuned and you 